You know, we we as Christians are the most blessed people on the face of the earth. Uh, why? Because we not only have the joys around us, uh, but we have eternal salvation in our soul. And uh, the, sal the, 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 the satisfaction of knowing that my sins have been forgiven and that I'm on my way to heaven. And that's just a wonderful thing. I want to read you some things this morning that uh, I believe that uh, is probably the... Uh, the, the motto of the of the average person that we know that goes to church. I'm not going to say Christian, but I'm going to say the average person that goes to church. I'm not going to get into it right away, but we're going to go look in the book of Lamentations in a minute. And uh, But I want you to turn to 2 Corinthians with me in chapter number 5. 2 Corinthians chapter number 5. I want to begin reading in, uh, let's read from verse number 1. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were, tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. If so be that being clothed we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon, that mortality might be swallowed up of life. Now he that hath wrought us for the selfsame thing is God, who also hath given unto us the earnest of the Spirit. Therefore we are always confident, knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Wherefore we labor that whether present or absent we may be accepted of Him. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men but we are made manifest unto God. And I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. For we, we commend not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that uh, ye may have somewhat to appear to answer them which glory in appearance and not in heart. For whether we be beside ourselves, it is to God, or whether we be sober, it is for your cause. For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one died for all, then were all dead. And that he should and that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet not henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Father, thank You for the privilege of being here this morning and worshiping in song. And Lord, in the Word of God, thank You for it, that we can read it freely, that we can uh, teach it, we can preach it, we can understand it, and we can appreciate what You've given us in the Bible. I pray that You'll use the Word today to speak to our hearts, Manifest Yourself to us through Your Word. We bless You and praise You for all that You do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Be seated. Now, in these verses, I want to look in verse number 17. The Bible says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. On Sunday mornings, we've been preaching on different doctrinal beliefs of things that we believe and why we believe it. It's sad to say that more than 50% of the average uh, church-going person, uh, they can tell you what they believe, but cannot tell you why they believe it. It's sad. I think that a Christian ought to know why he believes what he believes more importantly than what he believes. 
You need to know why you believe. And our problem in our churches today is there's no self-confidence in the life of the Christian because they have no idea what they really believe. Now, there are those that are going to tell you a lot of things about the Bible. Uh, there are those that will tell you, for instance, uh, you, you, you have to be baptized. And the Bible teaches that you should be baptized. But they can't explain why. They can't explain what type of baptism. They can't explain the differences between John's baptism and the baptism that the Lord uh, told us. They can't describe the difference between the baptism of John and the baptism that the disciples did when they were on this earth. And yet the baptism that we do is somewhat different. There are, there are three different ways that they baptize. People don't realize, oh, I didn't know that. Well, the problem is people say, well, you've got to be baptized, but exactly how? Exactly what? You see, back in John's day, John baptized according to John's baptism. Now, he preached the Word of God. He preached that they should be baptized in the name of Him that was to come. Now, John didn't know exactly who it was. John, in, he knew that there was a Messiah coming, but he said, look, you need to be baptized in the name of Him that was to come. Now, the Bible doesn't tell us that John baptized in the name of Jesus. Then when the, uh, when the apostles come on the scene, Jesus told them, He said, you need, they, they need to baptize like Philip. They, they baptized in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins. Okay? As we go on in the Bible, we find that they, had, they were baptized for that purpose. Well, one of the reasons why, or the reason, why they were baptized in the name of Jesus was because they were Jews that were to be baptized. And they had to be baptized in the name of Jesus because they had to show their allegiance to Jesus Christ. Why? Because when a Jew in those days would name the name Jesus Christ as his Savior, guess what? They put him to death. That's why Nicodemus went to Jesus by night. He didn't want to be seen in the daytime. They could have stoned him. They could have put him to death. Why? Because he was a follower of Jesus. So to prove that a Jew was really becoming a Christian and really a believer, he was baptized in the name of Jesus. When you go to the end of the book of Matthew, Jesus told the disciples, not the apostles, but the disciples, he told the disciples, He said, Go ye therefore into all the world, teaching all nations and baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Now some people don't believe in that. But that's what Jesus said. Why? Because you see, all of this is done at one time. Some people believe that uh, baptism is a thing that, uh, well, when you get baptized, then you receive the Holy Ghost. That's not true. You can't find that anywhere in the Bible. I can give you a couple of spots. One in the book of Acts. Uh, that the Bible said that they were baptized, but they had not yet received the Spirit of God until on the laying on of hands. Now, I believe this, and I believe according to the Scripture, that when a person gets saved, they get the Holy Ghost. You get all the Holy Ghost you'll ever get. You can't get part of God and, and not have all of it. You've got to have the whole thing. Therefore, in this chapter, in this verse of chap uh, chapter 5, verse 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. I believe that when a person gets saved, you get all of it. And if God didn't change you, God didn't save you. Now you can't get saved, be baptized, receive the Holy Ghost, and go living like you used to. It's not going to happen. Alright? I believe in the doctrine of change. There is a difference. You're going to change. You're not going to be the same person that you used to be. Now you're the same who you are. But as we find here, the Bible tells us that in look in verse number 10, I'm not going to deal with all of this, but notice this. He said, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Now, we're going to appear before the judgment seat of Christ. What is going to appear before the judgment seat of Christ? Not this flesh. Okay? We're going to have a new body when we stand before the judgment seat of Christ. You see, people don't realize they believe in the judgment seat. But they don't realize there are two judgment seats. There's the judgment seat of Christ, and then there's the white throne judgment. All born again Christians who are a member of the church of the living God will stand before the judgment seat of Christ and be judged by Jesus Christ Himself during 
the tribulation period. The tribulation period will be going on on the face of this earth, and you can it, it's in the Bible, and you can see that. And, and the Bible teaches us that while the tribulation period is going on on the earth, and God is dealing with the Jew, the church, the born again people are going to be in heaven, being married to the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to be judged. The Bible said there's going to be a marriage supper. We are the bride of Christ. God did not divorce Israel. He put her aside said, I'm going to let Jesus get a bride for Himself. It will be the bride of Christ, which is the church of the living God. And the church of the living God is going to rule and reign with Christ forever and ever. I know some people are going to think I'm nuts. But I can show you all this in the Bible. But I don't have time to go to all those things. But what happens is... This body of flesh is not going to stand before the judgment seat. I'm going to have a brand new body when I get there. The Bible said the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. You're going to find comfort in the fact that Jesus is coming back for you. If you have given your heart to Him, if you have received Him as your personal Savior, if God has by His mercy forgiven you of your sin, you are a part of the bride of Christ. You're going to be raptured out of here. You're not going to go through tribulations here. A lot of people believe that the tribulation is going to happen, or the, the rapture is going to happen in the middle or toward the end of the tribulation. There's no need for it. There's no reason for it because the tribulation is not for the church. Amen. We're not, I'm not going through tribulation. You might say, somebody out there is going to say, well, you know, Brother Matt, I believe I'm going through tribulation. Well, go, brother. I'm not going through it. Amen. I know what the Bible says. I know the truth, and the truth has made me free. Not set me free, but it's made me free. And I know the truth about change. I believe in the doctrine of change. I believe that if God didn't change you, God did not save you. You didn't get saved unless you changed. I know. 33 years ago, I got changed. Amen. I was changed on the inside. God changed my heart. He didn't save my flesh, but He saved my soul. Amen. So what a blessing. Now, Paul was speaking about this flesh. Look at what he said in verse 2. He said, For in this we groan, earning, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. You know what this is? That's that new body. He's not talking about a robe. He's not talking about a crown. He said, I'm earnestly expected. I want that brand new body. I know it's coming. I know it's mine. I know I'm going to have it. And I'm going to have it before I stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Amen. And when I stand in that brand new body, I know that that body will endure anything that I'm going to have to stand for at the judgment seat. And at the end of judging, I know I'm still going to be standing. Amen. Why? We're going to be judged for all the things that we've done in this life. Everything you do, everything you say, everything you think, and let me tell you this, everything you do, why you do it. Everything you say, why you said it. Everything you think, why you thought it. 